Well, tonight's project is cleaning of my mass airflow sensor. Now, my mass airflow sensor I put in new maybe 20,000 miles ago, and I've never cleaned it. Uh, it looks like it's in with, within spec. Um, this is my measurement right here. It's a uh, spec is between 6 to 10 gra grams per, per second. I'm running at 9.70, you know, so I'm within range, but I'm just kind of curious after I clean it if that changes, if it gets lower or not. Uh, you see my fuel trims look good. I'm within single digits. You never want to see double digits. That's telling you something is wrong. We have unmetered air, dirty mass airflow sensor, vacuum line leak. Something is amiss. You, you don't want to see double digits on your scan gauge. This is, of course, a scan gauge too that every 8.1 owner should have, especially if it's in a workhorse chassis or, or RV because um, a lot of our uh, codes are turned off. The What would normally set a light in a, in a pickup truck using an 8.1 that will not set a light in a workhorse chassis. A lot of that stuff is turned off and I do not know exactly why. But you can see with this, I've got a double stack uh, scan gauge set up. So I got, I'm monitoring my Allison 5 speed transmission temperature, water temperature, I'm in closed loop. Man, of course you can do all kinds of other settings too, but this is what I like to monitor uh, mostly. And of course I got my fuel trims, which is uh, very, very important. So uh, let's get in here and uh, do some cleaning. Okay, to make this process a little easier, I've got my steering wheel turned all the way to the right and I got my little exercise mat here, which is re really great for these old knees of mine. So I'm going to slide up in here and take that loose. I'm also going to be changing the air filter too while I'm at it. And the nice thing about this workhorse chassis is the room I have under it. Of course, my, my at least my W24 does because I don't even have the jacks down. I still got plenty of clearance to, to sit under here, under here and do what I need to do. And uh, just, I'm just loosen up my hose clamps. Get this little connector back here. Just push, unplug it. And uh, we've got our clips up top on our filter. We can't get those off. I know some of these chassis, I remember my P32 was a burger to get these clips loose because it was such a tight squeeze. I got a little more on this one. And uh, we can't wiggle some of this rubber connectors loose. Okay, I'm gonna pull back here where you can see a little bit more. You see how the air filter disconnects from the bottom here. And it just comes right off. Well, with one hand, it's a little difficult. There we go. There we got it. And we just gotta get the mass airflow sensor because this thing hasn't been off in 20,000 miles, so. I'm going to be a little, little tight on this rubber seal, so let me get two hands on it. Yeah, not too bad. I just give it a little twist, and out it comes. Remember, I, I replaced this one uh, about 20,000 miles back. The reason I replaced it is I, one of my early trips I was going out west, and every time I'd go up a mountain, I'd hear pinging, and I knew that wasn't good. So I called Brazzles, talked to John. He said most likely this was the problem. At the time, I didn't have a scan gauge with me, uh, so I didn't know, I couldn't measure any anything. So he told me to get one, so I quickly jumped on Amazon and got me a, I think this is a, the Adelphi. So I, I went and got, ordered me a, another Delphi, the same part number right here. Put that on the next campground, and that took care of it. Uh, the pinging went away. I can tell this one is a little dirty, so we're going to clean this up. Let's see, is that? I'm trying to figure out what's, what's made that little line right there. Anyway, we'll shine it up. Okay, okay. while I'm still under here, I just want to look this air filter really good. I mean, it, I mean, it don't look filthy. You don't see all kinds of creep dirt and twigs and stuff down in, in between the pleats but i'm gonna go, go ahead and change it anyway i'm not sure how many miles i got on it i'll have to look at my logbook and see uh, but one thing you 
you can do when you take these out is, is look at the the back side or you know after the filter this this cover make sure there's no dirt in here because if you see any kind of dirt in here then you'll know it's getting past the filter and that's something you want to avoid at all costs you want to keep clean air coming into our 8.1 lord knows it gulps a lot of air and because like up here look at this in this air box you see the dirt and dust see the, the fine dust so it, dust is getting in an air box and it's stopping it because we don't have no dust on this side now you may see something that looks different than yours this is what i've been playing around over the years i've tried different things cold air intakes and different stuff um so but i can't find that anything's really made a huge difference i kind of got this idea looking at the bank system i know they their system they created a larger opening as it comes into this box and i sort of did the same thing just sort of a homemade version uh you can see what i did here with the this is just a takeoff flange off of a like duck work that you have in a house and i put mastic around it that's what all the scoop is to, to seal the joint so that's what you're seeing up in there i can't tell you the truth that it made a hoot of difference but i was just playing around like experimenting like i do all right let's crawl out of here and do some cleaning Okay, just so I can see, try to get an idea of how dirty this is, I got me some nice clean white plastic here. So I'm going to try to see how much crud comes out of it. And get all that plastic, we'll, we'll just see. Because it does tell you on the, on the can, be sure to make sure it's not energized. You don't want to be spraying the stuff in there while, while the, it's energized. So, because it's so easy to take off, so just take it off and do it. See what it does. much difference there is it I am getting some crud out of it let's go the other way hmm, getting a little bit not as much as I thought I would get really thought I'd get more but I guess the key point is those little wires down there that, that heat up and measure. And I know that little part there in 6 o'clock position, I believe that is what uh, measures the air temperature coming in. And these other, other little wires get heated up. And, uh, and then it, that's what the computer uses to measure the, uh, the resistance value. Uh, how much air it takes to cool the temperature to cool the wire back down to whatever temperature the computer's looking for so that's how it it keeps things in sync with the air fuel ratio fuel trends and all that stuff that's why it's important i guess you know carbon and dirt and dust can can build up on those that's why you want to keep them cleaned off um, i think Brazos recommends doing this every 5,000 miles to, to keep them clean because we want to keep our, our fuel trims in check for sure, very, very important. I'll spray it a little bit more and see what happens. Oh, okay, I can see I'm getting more of an effect when I'm using the this nozzle. It's not very powerful. It's cleaning that, that carbon off a little bit more. I guess it's carbon dirt dust. Doing a, doing a better job. I'm going to let it soak a little bit. Okay, you see the you can see the crud I got out of it. It's still drying, so I'll fix and put that in here in a few minutes. But I want to talk about air filters. I looked it up. Uh, that filter there, I've got seventeen thousand miles on it. It's amazing how time flies. So I could put, put my new filter in, new Fram. There's the number, the CA thirty nine fourteen. They're cheap enough. Um, now we'll talk about some years ago. I tried this K and N filter. I did it for a little while and then I stopped using it. One thing I'm kind of, I'm really concerned about, there's two things. The, the one reason, let me show you here, turn the slide around a little bit. All right, you can see how you, because I know their, their ideal is trying to create better air, airflow, but I'm afraid you're sacrificing airflow for a possibility of dirt ingestion. Because the only way this filters is the fact that you spray oil on it. Um, just like lawnmowers, you know, 
back in the day, remember the little breeze and strut and push mowers, all they had was a foam air filter on your push mower. And people would make a mistake. They'd take that foam filter out, wash it really good in gasoline or whatever, put it back in their engine and go cut grass and not re-oil it. And, you know, soon the engine would be smoking and the reason it did is because there was no oil on that foam filter. And if you don't have oil on a foam filter, you do not have a filter. The fine dust particles just fly right through it. So that kind of concerns me about, about these filters. I understand if you oil them, oil them properly, oil them enough, okay, well, then they'll probably do their job. But I really didn't see any benefit of having it in there and I don't want to risk the possibility of getting any dirt ingestion into my engine, even if it was my fault by not oiling properly or you do your oil too much and risk getting oil onto your sensor here, your mass airflow sensor and mucking, messing it up. And filters are cheap enough and I just don't see the uh, cost benefit of using a K&N filter. That is my experience. Yours may differ. But that's my, my two cents worth. So we'll climb in here and put things back together and uh, start it up and, you know, to see if anything's changed on our um, our grams per, per sec, second okay, or grams per minute. I can't remember how that goes. Okay, I want to talk about this, the filter, how important it is to make sure you get this in here right. This, this, the W24 is much easier to deal with, but I can remember I had a, a OP32 was a real pain to get that filter in there and to get it in there right. It was, it was like the box was kind of wedged in there kind of tight, maybe it distorted, and it always gave me fits about getting it locked in correctly. So you want to make sure, you know, because this, it's all about getting this good seal. I don't know if I can do this one handed or not, but um, we'll try it and see. There we go. You want to make sure you're down there good. And then get your, your clips on there. Nice tight fit. Oh, something I just discovered because I had this bright light under here. I realized we have a little drain hole. This little hole well, right up here. There's a, little, there's a little drain hole, I guess, in case we ever get water ingestion. It gives it a way to get it out of the box. I've never noticed that before. All right, so I'll, I'll just open this up here. Put that back in, and we'll be ready to start her up. And as you can see, it's a pretty easy process putting back together you can't mess it up you can't put it in, can't even put it in backwards because one one diameter is larger than the other and you've got to arrow which way it got the airflow is going all right so we got that in there i'll tighten up those hose clamps i'll go ahead and reconnect my connector yeah it's on there good all righty Turn up the hose clamps and then we'll start it up. Well, you know, I didn't get much dirt out of it, but I did see, I am seeing an improvement. You see, I'm down in the sevens now. Yeah, seven grams per second. Uh, where before I was sitting about 10. And what's our spec? Six to 10. So I did get an improvement and the fuel trims look, look better also. So that kind of really surprised me. Uh, not getting much dirt out of it, but I, I did see an improvement. So I like that. Um, and for those of you watching this video, seeing these double gauges that I got set up, you may be wondering how I did that. Well, okay, here's how I did it. So there's my OBD2 connector. It splits into a Y. I can plug in two of those scan gauges. So that way, as I'm going down the road, I can uh, look at eight different uh, data inputs at the same time. I like my data. Okay. Before I finish up this video, I'm back in the house. I want to show you some of the stuff that's turned off. You won't believe it. But here is 2005 workhorse 8.1. Next to it is 2005 Chevrolet Silverado 
with the same engine. Look at how many stuff, all the stuff that's turned off on ours. As far as like to see the the mass airflow sensor, system performance, E101, it's turned off. If, if you own a Silverado with 8.1, it's turned on. All this stuff in red are items that are turned off. Mm. Oh, what's I got four pages of this stuff. Um, real important right here. So fuel fuel trim system lean or rich all that shut off if you own it if you got that engine in a in a truck those are turned on here they are down there yeah lean or rich what else we got turned off uh the o2 sensors insufficient uh, switching all that's shut off also where it's turned on in the truck and engine misfire detected P0300, that's turned off. You got a truck, it's turned on. So that's why it's imperative that you own a scan gauge too, because it's up to you to monitor your engine. You can't depend on your engine to do it for you and to throw you a light to warn you something you know, bad could be happening. You know, running lean, that's a critical thing. We gotta keep these engines from running lean. That's what destroys them. You know, it's it's rare, but it, it's still you don't you don't want that to happen to you if you can avoid it. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Hope you like that. See you bye.